want to cover the best strategies for losing fat and intuitive eating. See, a lot of people out there can't fully commit or just simply do not want to commit because of the stress it involves of tracking macros. Now, for some people, tracking macros is not a problem. It's not a stressful thing. It does not create anxiety. It's not overwhelming. And it's actually very easy to fit into their lifestyle. That's how I am. But the reality is, I'm not the same as you. You are not the same as me. And we are all different. So there's no reason that we should force macro tracking on anybody. For those people who do not want to track macros, intuitive eating comes into play. The problem here is simple. I intuitively love cookies and Ben and & Jerry's. That's not part of my plan. So we have to be smart and we can't just intuitively eat everything that comes into our kitchen. Otherwise, we will not see our fat loss goals that we are striving to accomplish. So today I'm gonna to give you three strategies that I use with my clients to make sure that they are seeing fat loss success, but they can continually just be on an intuitive eating nutrition plan instead of being forced to track macros. The first strategy we need to talk about is the most simple strategy, and this is the first one you're gonna to wanna to implement. That strategy is eat whole foods for 90% of the time. The 90-10 rule is pretty simple and it's pretty well known. 90% of the time, we are focused on eating whole foods. These are like paleo-like foods, things that actually agree with your gut, with your stomach, do not create bloat, they digest e easily, and most likely, they were either grown, walked, flew over, or swam on the earth. That basically means we're eating plants and animals. Pretty simple, but it's pretty specific, and it's going to help you not only cut calories intuitively, but it's gonna make sure that you're getting all your health parameters in check. And when we look at whole foods, as a whole, they are pretty voluminous and low calorie. What that means is they're going to fill us up. They're gonna keep us satiated. They're gonna provide us with the nutrients our body needs, and they're gonna keep our calories in check. So we can actually eat quite a bit, get full, feel satiated, feel really good, but never go into a calorie surplus, which is not going to let us lose fat. So the first strategy is very important. It's the first thing you need to focus on. 90% of your diet should be whole foods. That other 10%, can be whatever you want it to be. It can be beer, it can be junk food, it can be sushi, it can be whatever you enjoy, but remember, it's that 10%. Doesn't mean you have a cheat day, it just means every once in a while when the occasion occurs, feel free to have a little bit of flexibility in your plan. Strategy number two, this is the second thing we are going to implement after we are focusing on 90% of our diet being whole foods. This strategy is pretty simple. In fact, this was the first ebook I ever wrote. It's called the handful diet. And what you're going to do here is you're gonna use your hands to measure your portion sizes. This isn't as specific as macros, obviously. It's not as specific as using a food scale, but it does regulate your food to your body because the bigger you are, the bigger your hand is, the bigger your hunger is going to be. It's pretty simple and it makes a lot of sense. So what you're going to do is ensure that you get one to two handfuls of protein per meal. Obviously, the less meals you have, the closer to two handfuls you are going to go. So let's say you have only two or three meals per day because maybe you're practicing some intermittent fasting. You're probably gonna go with two handfuls of protein per meal. That's gonna ensure you're following a high protein diet, which we know, backed by studies and research, is probably the most advantageous way to lose fat and preserve muscle mass. The next thing we're gonna think about is if we're eating four to five meals, you're probably gonna be in that one to one and a half handfuls of protein per meal. And if you're eating closer to five to six meals per day, you can have one handful of protein per meal. No matter what, you're probably going to be getting about 20 or more grams of protein per serving. What this is going to allow is a better rate of muscle protein synthesis. This is basically the anabolic response our body has to protein. When we consume protein, MPS goes up. That allows us to recover, build muscle, so on and so forth. We want this signal. We need at least 20 grams of protein per meal in order to have this in an optimal rate. So if we do a handful of protein per meal, no matter how big you are, you're probably going to hit that rate and you're going to be safe. So you can kind of auto-regulate this based on your hunger. If you are very hungry throughout the diet, move it closer to two. If you are less hungry, keep it at one. For your carbohydrates, you can have a fistful. And last but not least, for your fats, you can have one to two thumb-sized portions of fat per meal, unless your protein source is a fatty protein source like whole eggs, salmon, or steak. If we follow this simple way of measuring our foods, we auto-regulate and intuitively eat based on our hunger, based on our nutritional demands, and we always make sure we're staying within our caloric budget without having to really worry about the numbers. Number three, the last strategy is the most specific, but it's going to kind of take you to that next level. This is after we've implemented stage one and stage two successfully for at least a few weeks. Guys, 
fat loss takes time. Our body needs to adapt. So implement these things, wait one, two or three weeks, and then implement the next thing. Do not rush this process. But strategy number three is carb cycling. Very, very simple, very specific to your training, and it's going to allow you to get enhanced performance and results. All you're gonna do is have more starchy carbs on your training days. This is a scale nutrient, and what that means is as we train more, we probably need more carbohydrates because carbohydrates support our body with glucose, which is the primary fuel to train harder. On the days we train, we are going to have starchy carbohydrates. On the days we do not train, we are gonna limit the amount of starchy carbohydrates we have. As you go through your fat loss process, if you come about a plateau and you stop losing weight, this is the easiest thing to do. Simply remove the starches on your rest days or lower your total starches by carbohydrates every single day. This is an easy way to auto-regulate or adjust your calories down again without tracking anything. So we're staying in that intuitive eating zone. So all you're gonna do, once again, have more carbohydrates on your training days, less on your rest days. As you move forward and need to break through plateaus, simply remove the carbohydrates on your rest days while just keeping minimal or the moderate amount on your training days. This is the best way to carb cycle while intuitive eating. All right, I hope this helps you out and I hope for those people out there who feel like macro tracking might be too stressful or just not fit with their lifestyle, I hope this gives you a strategy that you can actually use and see results over the next six plus weeks. Take these strategies, implement them, track your progress, and let me know how it goes. If you want any more free content from us, go check out boomboomperformance.com.